are listening to Pastor Elvis Ajiman. Pastor Elvis Ajiman is the founder of Grace Mountain Ministry and the convener of Alpha R. Follow Pastor Elvis on podcast. Podcast added for Android users is Pastor Ajiman Elvis. And podcast for Apple users is Pastor Ajiman Elvis. And now today's message. Stay blessed. Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 10 For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom And to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit Somebody say the gifts of the spirit To another faith by the same spirit To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit It means that when it comes to healing we don't have one gift The gifts of healing To another the working of miracles and to another prophet, may you receive a gift this morning to another discerning of spirits to another diverse of kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but today I want us to look at one of the giftings that are talked about in the body of Christ it says that to some he gives the discernment not of a spirit discernment of spirits it means that this world is dealing with spirits the world is crowded with spirits what we see is far less than what we don't see have you seen that this church is almost full but in the spirit is overcrowding because the spirits here are more than us so when elijah prayed for his servants he said the Lord opened his eyes to see And he said that they that are with us Are more than they that are with them It means that we are two But spiritually the spirits behind us Are more than the soldiers we are looking at So one of the interesting things in this world Is to have the gift To discern what spirit is around you Because at every moment in time A particular spirit is with you and no man is permitted to see spirit we discern spirit we we discern their presence we don't see them so paul said that we have not received the spirit of this world but we have received the spirit that is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us which things we speak to you not of words of man's wisdom but that which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with the spiritual then he came back and said which spirit the natural man cannot receive which things the natural man cannot receive because they are foolishness to him and he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned so even the ministry of the holy spirit we don't see him we discern him he said that with things they do not know the knowing of spirits does not come with eyes it comes with a certain gift called discernment receive that gift this morning Oh, I shall receive it this morning. And when you receive that gift, the only job it comes to do is number one, to help you know the Holy Spirit. And number two, it helps you know the multi-billion spirits around. So the moment you enter into an atmosphere, you will be able to detect which spirit is at work. The moment a person comes close to you, you will be able to know what spirit is coming. Because hear me, no human being is of himself. Every human being is controlled by a spirit. And if it is not the spirit of God, it's another spirit. But no human being is walking free. No, sir. They have, it has never happened. And it will never happen. The Bible says, the moment the spirit of God left Saul, an evil spirit entered. No human being is empty. Never forget this. So if I do not come to you in the name of the Holy Spirit. I'm coming to you with a, a particular spirit that you must identify in order to deal with me. The interesting thing is that it doesn't matter how you pray. If you don't know the spirit you are dealing with, it will not respond to you. That's why it's important to discern the spirit. You see, Jesus was casting out a, a madman with 6,000 demons. 
And he said, I adjure you on clean spirit. Leave. And the spirits were still there. Then Jesus asked them, what is your name? And they said, we are legend. That was when they left. So you must discern spirits in order to deal with them. Because there are multi-billion spirits looking for doors to enter. When last time we ended with, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So we are talking about, and I came down to the point that the gate of hell is not a particular gate. It's personalities, principalities, powers, spirits. You must understand that anytime we are talking about a door, we are talking about something, someone. It's either the person is a human being or a pers- the person is a spirit. So John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the door. He comes to one of the churches, the Laodicean church, and he said, I stand at the door and knock. I'm talking... Every- when we talk about door, we are talking about a personality. It's either it's a demon or a human being. So when the Bible says, Baal Parazim is the God that gives breakthrough. He's not talking about giving you breakthrough in a vacuum or giving you breakthrough by breaking a door. It is giving you breakthrough by giving you access to a human being. Doors. Isaiah chapter 45, I will break the gate of bars. For Cyrus, he was not talking about nations' gates. He was talking about personalities, kings. That God was saying, I'll break them for Cyrus. So Cyrus take over the world. Doors. The Bible says that the moment Judas ate the soul, the bread, Satan entered into him. And he went straight away and betrayed Jesus. So the question is that, is Satan entered into Judas to be able to sell Jesus? Then the one who bought also, Satan entered into him. And the one who also stood before the judgment of Pilate and said, let his blood be upon us and our children, Satan entered. So Satan has the power to even take over a whole city at a time. I'm talking about the discerning spirits. He seeks one door, then he enters, and his agenda is to enter every door around. I'm coming to tell something, never forget. If you enter into every church... There is a door for God and there is a door for Satan. If you enter into every home, there is a door for Satan and there is a door for God. If you enter into every nation, there is a door for Satan and there is a door for God. There is always one particular person Satan has access to 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 displace everything he wants to displace and to express himself. There is always one person. And to a point that he could capture a whole city at the moment. And the city didn't know that they were all possessed. And that is the agenda that is being run in our generation. They bring up one news. And every Christian talks about it. And we don't know that anyone who opens his mouth to say anything about it. Your door is open for the enemy to enter. So most often on Radio morning shows, TV shows, what happened is that one agenda to possess half of the nation. So you see a particular week and the whole nation is talking about one thing. The whole nation is attacking a certain pastor. The whole nation is attacking a certain church. The whole nation is attacking the president. The whole nation is doing that. It is an agenda. So when the whole nation stood to attack Jesus, it, at that point, the whole nation was possessed by Satan. Please, hear me and hear me well. You can be born again and still be possessed by the devil. There are three processes of the enemy's possessions. There is the possession of the spirit. There is the possession of the soul. And there is the possession of the body. Paul talks about 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul talks in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that and a messenger from hell has been sent to me to perfect me for a tongue is put into my flesh. So the greatest apostle of all times was possessed in the body. A messenger from hell attacked his body. So there were sores and sickness in the body of Paul. And Paul said, this is a messenger of Satan. So a messenger of Satan had access to the body of Paul. And Paul knew, this is a demon in my body. Then there is the possession of the soul. Your feeling, 
your mind, your thinking faculty. There's a possession of your soul. Where a demon takes over your soul. And he controls every aspect of your life. The way you feel. The way you talk. Whether you are sad or you, or you have fears. Everything inside that regards your soul. You, you feel intimidated. You are fearful. You, you are always sad. You are always depressed. There is the possession of the soul. They take over your soul and they control all your emotions. Because you always express what is inside your soul. So he fills your soul with hatred. He fills it with unforgiveness. He fills it with imaginations. He fills it with whatever he wants. That is the possession of your souls. Then we have the possession of the spirit. That one. You cannot be born again to have your spirit possessed. That those are the realm of the witches. Those who have accepted idol worshippers. They have sold their spirit. They can never be born again. Until they renounce what they have intentionally given into. Am I with the church here at all? Follow me very well. So we have these three possessions. The possession of the body, any human being can go through it. The possession of the soul, it is only those who are not grounded in the word of God that the enemy will take over them. Be transformed by the renewing of the mind through the word of truth. So those who don't listen to the word those who don't read the word, those who don't meditate on the word of God, it's likely that Satan takes over their soul. And every wrong and evil action that comes out of a person is coming from the soul. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. And Jesus said that it is not that which comes from outside to inside that defiles a man but that which comes from the inside. And he said that for all fornication and evil thoughts and everything comes from within. So when the enemy possess your soul, he is controlling everything that will come out. That is why you must bear the spirit of discernment to know what is happening around you. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he said something very interesting. He said, lest the devil takes advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And the word devices means we are not ignorant of his mental tricks. We are not ignorant of his strategies. Lest he takes advantage. It means that anytime Satan smarts you, he takes advantage of you. Anytime Satan plays wisdom around you, he takes advantage. But may our eyes be open. I'm going to talk about four spirits. There are billions of them. But today, I'm permitted to talk about just four. There is the highest principality. The Bible calls him the prince of the air. The Bible calls him devil. The Bible sometimes refers to him as Satan. And Ezekiel chapter 28, he was referred to as a cherub. And Isaiah is referred to as Lucifer. So he has two names before he sinned. And two names after he sinned. Before he sinned, he is called Lucifer, the light bearer. Cherub, the carrier of the glory of God. So before he sinned, he was full of light. And whenever the Bible talks about light, he's talking about the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And there was nothing made that was made without the word and the word became the light of men and that light was the life of men so whenever we are talking about the light of god we are talking about the word of god so for him to be called lucifer the light bearer it means that he was also in charge of the word and jesus is the word so it means that lucifer was the bearer of christ <laughs> Lucifer was actually the bodyguard of the word. Because the Bible says that there are three that bears witness on earth. The blood, the spirit, and the water. And there are three that bears witness in heaven. The father, the spirit, and the word. He didn't say Jesus. He said the word. So in heaven, 
Jesus is acknowledged as the word. So when we say Lucifer is the bearer of the light, it means that he was literally the carrier of Christ. You cannot approach Christ without passing through Lucifer. Am I here with the church at all? This was him. Then he sinned. Then he was given two names. Satan, devil. But hear me. And it means enemy or adversary or deceiver. Deceiver. Listen to this very well. The personality of the devil is not known by his location. Never make a mistake to address Satan by his location. He is not known by his location. Because he has four different places and four different realms to operate. Satan operates under the earth. He operates on the earth. He operates in the second heavens. And he operates in the third heavens. Hey, do I have a church here at all? So you cannot know the devil by his location. Because he's not at one place. The Bible said that when Ahab wanted to go for war, and he brought Joseph. And Joseph said, before we go for the war, please let a prophet prophesy. Then 400 prophets come. And they all prophesy that Ahab will win the battle. But there was something that striked Joseph and said, Is there no prophet here? Ah, 400 people just prophesied. Then he still asked, Is there no prophet of God around? Then Ahab said, There is some guy, he has never prophesied good about me. He has never prophesied. When he comes right now, he prophesied doom. Then they call Machiah. Then Machiah comes and says, Oh, you will win. You will be victorious. And Ahab said, how many times should I talk to you to tell me the truth? But you, you are looking for prophecy. <laughs> you are looking for prophecy. Then he tells, how many times should I tell you to tell me the truth? And now, Micaiah looks into the heavens and says, I have seen the Lord seated. And the horse of heaven beside him left and right. And he said, I heard the Lord say, who do I send to persuade Ahab to go for war that he may be killed? And he said, all others spoke when you read first Kings 22. He said, All others spoke, but then a spirit appeared. Makar said, And I saw a spirit appear. And he said, Send me, I will go. And he said, And the Lord said to the spirit, Wherewith? In other words, how are you going to do it? And he said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. So there is a general council in heaven, and a spirit appears. And who is that spirit? Satan. So he has access even into the third heavens to control matters on earth. He said, don't mind these people talking. I think I have an idea. It means that God wanted something done. And the whole of heaven could not really get God what he wanted until Satan appeared. He said, I know what to do. God said, wherewith? How are you going to do it? He said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth. God said, go and you will prosper. So what we are dealing with is not a joke. The personality we are dealing with, you don't know him. You cannot know the devil by location. No, 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 no. You cannot know the devil by personality. Sir, no. Second Corinthians chapter 11. He said that even the devil has transformed himself into an angel of light. Satan has the opportunity to become anything he wants to be. If he wants to be a white man, he can appear to you as a white man. If he wants to be a Muslim, he can appear to you as a Muslim. He can appear to you as a black man. He can appear to you as any pet, even an animal. So you cannot limit Satan to his personality. I know Satan, there was two horns, sir. No. He said he can transform himself into an angel of light. It means that you can see him. Don't forget he's a, he was an, a, a light bearer. So you can see him like this and you would think he's Jesus Christ. Do you know many people who say and Jesus Christ visited me, it was a devil? I won't continue. <laughs> Most of the people who said, Je- and I saw Jesus visit me, it was the devil. You can't limit him to personality, he changes. He can become everything he wants to be. But the heavens of heavens acknowledge Satan by one thing. His ability to use his mind. This revelation you have known Satan I'm repeating again If you catch the revelation Of the fact that Satan Is not what we see And where he is But he is a mindset You have won the battle 50% <laughs> The devil is a mindset He's, he's a strategy, he's a plan he, He's called craftiness The 
The Bible said, Rejoice, O inhabitants of the heavens, and woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For the accuser of the brethren has been sent, and he that deceived the wells. He is a crafty, dangerous. Satan is an institution, he's a mindset. He that he's not interested in you seeing his image, he's, he's interested in you not knowing that he's actually a stronghold in a mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through Christ in the pulling down of stronghold, strongholds. And the word stronghold there means a fortified idea. A fortified mindset. A strong mindset. So what you are fighting with is not a certain personality somewhere. When we talk of Satan, other demons look like something. Satan doesn't look like something. He's a mindset. He's a stronghold. That is why he rules nations. Why? Because nations are ruled by constitutions, set of rules, set of laws. And sometimes, most of the laws are the devil himself. Most of the written laws, most of the plans, institutions, the instructions governing nations are the devil himself. May you receive the spirit of discernment to understand what I'm talking about. So this weapon... It's good for the pulling down strongholds and casting imaginations. Imaginations. Satan is not interested in coming to scare you with a, with a, a scary face. No, 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 no. He is that little thought that comes into your mind. Imaginations. Imaginations. You are there and you are dreaming like there's an accident. There's an accident. There's an accident. If you, that is the devil himself. You are there and you are dreaming as if you will fail that exams. That is Satan that has visited you. You didn't even know. Imaginations, pictures, mental pictures, mental videos and it comes at you and you are you are thinking, oh it's my own thought. Sir, it was not your thought. It's the devil that just came. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not things that are seen. But it is through God in the pulling down, pulling down of fortified ideas, strong ideas. There are some people who have some mentalities about their lives. The reason why just common preaching has not been able to take it from their minds is because it's a fortified idea. It's Satan himself in their minds. So if you tell them that this is what the word of God is saying, they still cannot get it because what is in their mind is not just there. It's, it's a stronghold. And today we break every satanic stronghold. We break every satanic stronghold. Imaginations are one of the most powerful entities of the devil. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 6 verse number 1. Genesis 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That they were beautiful. They were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be as an hundred and twenty years. There were times in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Somebody said the sons of God. And they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Somebody say continually. When demons slept with women, the children that came out, their inheritance was evil imaginations. The only good thing that, the only thing God spoke about them, that this is their trait of being the children of an intercourse between demons and humans, were that they had evil imaginations. 
And because of that, they continually did evil. They continually did evil. Because imaginations were wrong. Am I here with the church at all? So when Satan wants you to sin, he does not begin with anything you see outside. He begins with an imagination. James said something that if you fall into sin and you are tempted, don't say, I'm tempted of God. But it is out of your lust that led you into that temptation. And he said that when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin conceives, it gives birth to death. It means that for lust to transfer to sin, it must get pregnant with sin for a long time and deliver sin. And sin will get pregnant with death for a long time and later give birth to death. But it all starts from lust. And the lust is drawn from your imagination. Am I teaching you something at all? So when demons and humans met, the end product, the children that came, the only thing Bible should talk about them was that their imaginations were continually evil. Oh, I break the spirit of any satanic imaginations. This is our problem. The things we picture, the things we see, those things we are thinking about day and night, is the problem of tomorrow. When the enemy can control the mind, he can control every aspect of your life before you face tomorrow. You are thinking of, I will soon die. You, you, are, you are taking your grief. Most of the things we say are demonic spirits. Eh? They are not demonic spirits, so they are us. All the demonic spirit did was to plant the imagination. And our imagination were powerful enough to open the doors. May you begin to think that you are strong. May you begin to think that you are rich. May you begin to think that you are righteous. May you begin to think that you are strong and mighty. I can't talk much with the devil, but you must understand that he is a mindset. He is an institution that is moving about. That's why we have all kinds of groups in the world. And every group comes with an idea, a mindset, feminism or whatever it is. It comes with them. It comes to plant a mindset into people. We have several groups out there that comes to violent groups, vigilantes, whatever it is. It is coming to plant a certain idea. We are meant for violence. Those are satanic agendas to infiltrate our imaginations and thoughts. So Satan is not somewhere right now. If what I'm feeding you with will not help your imagination, that is Satan I'm giving to you. That is, that is Satan I just dashed you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anytime someone gives you a counseling that is contrary to God's agenda, he just dashed you Satan as a gift. Anytime a person is trained in the mind, counseled, talked into a situation that is evil, he was just dashed the gift of Satan. Today, may you be discerning enough to reject every voice of Satan. Do you see why Jesus called Peter Satan? What Peter was saying was not wrong. Far be it that you will die. You can't die. Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. So it was a nice counseling. Don't be saying you will die. You can't die. But that was a gift of Satan. To plant something in the mind of Jesus that why am I worrying myself to go and die? I don't deserve to die. But the father has sent you to die. But somebody is saying you don't deserve to die. The moment you got hold of that idea, if he had not rejected that idea, that was Satan that has planted himself. And when he comes, he will tight and bolt himself so strong that he becomes a, a stronghold and nothing can take him out of your mind again. I feel, oh, that, oh, sorry, be home. I'm not supposed to die. I'm the son of God. I cannot die like that. Men cannot kill me. I cannot die on the cross. It's a sinful death. Why? Because somebody planted a seed. From today, if anybody begins to say anything that will corrupt your imagination, may you receive the spirit of discernment to reject it in the name of Jesus. Not everything is meant for you. There are times that God wants you to focus on him. And someone comes to tell you, focus on making money. That was the devil planting himself. Have you seen 
He said, you cannot serve two masters. And he said, you cannot serve God. And he didn't say money. He said, mammon. Mammon is an excessive love for money. When that paper is in your pocket, it's money. If it climbs into your heart, it is mammon, idol, God. So when money grows to a point in your heart, it becomes a God. You are always talking about it. That's why I have a, I have a big problem. When somebody calls himself, I'm called to, to be a financial preacher. God doesn't want that competition. God will never anoint somebody to be able to teach people to chase money. There are demonic agendas in the church and in the kingdom that we don't know. Obedient, the human is is anointed to psych you to go and make money. That was the gift of the devil given to you right now. God doesn't have such office. There is no such office like that in the Bible. There is only one office that is to build you to attain the fullness of the stature of Christ. And he said, when you get to that point, all other things shall be added. All other things shall be added. You know, both God and the devil, eh, they write on your desires. So the Bible says that for God, who both caused us to will and to do his good will, he both caused us to will, to will. So when God wants to use a man, he lay hold on your will and your desires and your zeal, then he, when he captivates that, he can use you at any point. And when the devil is also coming, he locates a desire. So he amplifies that desire. And the devil knows that what this flesh is looking for is prosperity, money, cars, houses, and all that. So he lays hold on that one and he adds the gospel to it and you feel that it's of God. But it's never of God. It's never of God. May your eyes be open. It's, it's never of God. There are many things happening in the body of Christ that we can't see. That, oh, come on. This one is a financial. He carries the oil of finances and he teaches only money, how to make money. What devil is that? When he says you can't serve two masters, mammon, mammon. He didn't even say money, uh, God, Satan, mammon. God, the God of money. The God of money, you can't serve. So you focus on the God of the heavens and of the earth. And he will bring you the God of money under your feet. It's a realm. May your eyes be open. Let me shift from Satan to the second demon. And this demon is gradually taking over the world. And it saddens my heart. Genesis chapter 6. The Bible says that the sons of God took to wives the daughters of men and and God saw okay, the sons of God took to wives yes, go to verse 3 and the Lord said, my spirit shall no not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, two people are committing the sin, these are fallen angels that have taken to wives the daughters of men and you are angry with men and you reduce the age of man from over 600, 700 years and you bring it down to 120 years. What did man do? Follow me. Then the first anger of God is directed to man. Then he comes down and I thought he was coming to say because the women slept with the demons. But he comes back and say that their imaginations are evil. So he didn't even touch the sexual immorality. You know why? Because the Bible says, and the sons of God. Other verses says, and the angels took to wives. So, so long as it is marriage, whoever you marry to God doesn't care. <laughs> Wait. So long as it was a legal marriage, he can't punish it. So he jumped the sexual immorality and punished men because of their imaginations and decided to wipe away the whole world because the bible says that they produced children who were giants so we all know that he wiped away the, the race of men but after the flood there were still anarchs there were still giants that when they entered canaan they said we are like grasshoppers because the children of the anarchs are there 
it means that he wiped away the world, but the sons of God still remained after the flood. Yes. But if they all died, why did they still produce giants? Because it was left with only Noah and his family. So how did it means that they were spirits and they took over bodies? So when you destroy the whole world, I'm still a spirit. I just borrowed the body to sleep with women. So if you want to destroy the body, I'm going again. When the world settles and another woman come, I will come. <laughs> when more beautiful women come again, I will still find flesh and come. So you see, Jesus says something in Matthew 24. Let's, let's go there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter number 24. Verse 36 to 39. But of that day, Jesus is talking about the coming of the Son of God or the Son of Man. But of that day, and our knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, somebody say eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Four things. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were giving into marriage. So the sons of men were marrying, and the sons of men were giving the daughters of men into marriage with the sons of God. So Jesus was specific to, to mention the four things that were happening before the flood. Then he's saying that the same thing is about to happen. No one knows when Jesus is coming. Not even the angels. Then he cites the most mysterious example. And he said it will be like the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking, marrying and giving into marriage. What is he trying to say? It means that before the flood... There were angels on earth marrying women. And Noah was preaching and the angels couldn't discern that this is true. And he's saying that so the angels of these days also will not know. When Jesus will come, it will be like the days of Noah. When the angels were just marrying and they didn't know that the flood will be coming. Are you getting me here? So it means that even in that age... Angels could not discern that God is about to destroy the world. And Jesus is saying that not even angels know when the Son of Man will come. It will be like those days. They were marrying and giving into marriage. It means that the angels understood the mind of God to a point that they were not ready to sleep with any woman until they marry her. One day, when you listen to this sermon again, you will understand. When you sleep with a woman you are not married to, even angels are afraid. So the question is, after the flood, they were there and they still produced giants as children. But why can't we find them now? Where are they? How come we don't have those giants again? Are they not sleeping with women again? Are they not marrying again? I want to show you something. Go to Jude chapter 6. Good news translation. Can we all read it? One, two, go. Limits of their proper authority. But abandon their own dwelling place. They are bound with eternal chains in the darkness below. Where God is keeping them for that great day. On which they will be condemned. Verse 7. Let's read it loud and clear. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah and the nearby towns. Whose people acted as those angels did. And indulge in sexual immorality and perversion. They suffered the punishment of eternal fire as plain warning to all. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah and the nearby town whose people acted as those angels did. Verse 6 says, Angels left their limit of authority, indulged in some sexual matters, and then they are changed. In eternal darkness, waiting for judgment. And then he says, remember Sodom, who did the same sins as the angels. And entered into sexual immorality and perversion. So, the Bible didn't tell us why 
those fallen angels were destroyed and we can't find them anymore. But he compares them to what Sodom and Gomorrah did. And do you know what Sodom and Gomorrah did? Give me King James Version of the verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, like manner, like manner, like the angels giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Sodom and Gomorrah graduated from men sleeping with women to men sleeping with men. Strange flesh. With women sleeping with women. Women sleeping with animals. Men changing their sexual organs. Women changing their sexual organs. And he's saying that when Sodom and Gomorrah tried what the angels did, they were burnt in fire. And those angels too did it and they are changed in eternal darkness. The reason why we don't find them anymore is that it got to a time after the flood, they graduated from marrying women to go into homosexuality. And the moment they stepped into homosexuality, God gathered all of them and changed them and they are still in darkness today. All the demons that were on earth and were sleeping around. After the flood, they took over the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. They decided not to sleep with women anymore. They started sleeping with men, man to man, woman to woman, chasing after strange flesh. And God bound them. When Sodom and Gomorrah repeated, God bent them. And today, the world is telling African nations that legalize homosexuality. Do we know the extent of what God can do to a people when it comes to homosexuality? And some of us are blind. And pastors calling themselves, I'm a gay pastor. Is their right. When angels that were spared before the flood tried it, they are in darkness now. Are you the one trying to come and do it for the sake of grace? Sir, I want you to know there is a spirit that is hovering over the earth. It is the spirit that makes men go for strange flesh. Strange flesh. Strange flesh is flesh you are not married to. Strange flesh is flesh like your own sex. Strange flesh is going after animals. Strange flesh. Strange flesh. That is what we are going for now. How sad and how pathetic. When you see a homosexual, you have seen someone who is highly... Po- Listen... The sons of God or the fallen angels had one problem, last. And the last grew to a point that they were destroyed by God and they are in chains now. Whilst others were working with Satan to gain territories, they were sleeping with women and men and chasing men. Eh? In every institution, there are vagabonds. (laughs) <laughs> when Satan and his team were planning heavy things these demons were running after women and look at where it has ended them they are changed in darkness and they are no more allowed to come to this earth because they practice homosexuality I am not going to tell you many things about lust but hear me strange flesh can be masturbating your own strange flesh sleeping with yourself Strange flesh, a sign of demonic possession, sign of satanic possession. And hear me, if you get to that point, you are no no grace will exempt you. No grace. Because before the flood, the demons were exempted. But after the flood, something that made God destroy a whole nation. And he says that when the nation took after the angels, and we know that these, these nations were so perverse that even when the two angels entered into Sodom, men wanted to sleep with them. That's homosexuality. Look at yourself. That's where many of us have got into. Chasing after strange flesh. We have graduated from women. We have graduated from men. Lesbianism. Woman kissing woman. Man kissing man. A man who cried the media said, "Own body near soft." Now, my mommy and you there. What is wrong with you? Are you normal? You are not soft cover, hard cover. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You are like a hard body pickup. <laughs> you are like. <laughs> but it's not them. It's a spirit. And now. Is penetrating into the world. Do you know that there are now certain levels 
there are certain presidential seats there are certain positions in some institutions that before you get to the requirement is to be a gay so most of the world leaders they are gay not by their desires but because it's a demand on a position that has been given them there are certain nations that have been gripped by this if you don't legalize gay we won't give you money again so they have legalized gayism not because of anything but when they don't do that the world will not support them strange flesh a nation i heard some time ago has reduced minor to about 10 years or so so when you sleep with a 10 year old girl it's nothing you can marry a 10 year old girl or so strange flesh demonic entities and we are watching carelessly the church is not preaching against it the church is not standing against it because we don't care we have not even seen that it's strange it, it destroyed even angels people of God what brought angels down was last when Satan wants to bring you down prepare for last and last goes five minutes there's a strange demon a demon of depression not only last but depression listen most at times the greatest attack on you is not what is manifesting physically most often what is really attacking you is behind what is manifesting there are some demons that cannot come straight to you because you are stronger than but there are certain demons too that you are not stronger than because you have not discerned them when last is coming you will see him when your body start doing some things you will know this is last so last will never come first there is a senior brother of last that most often is called loneliness he's a senior brother he visits you and it doesn't matter the people around you you still feel lonely it doesn't matter what you are involved in life you still feel lonely so you redraw then the moment you redraw he connects you to your phone then last is getting access you start browsing the internet and now whether you like it or not naked pictures will come am i lying wherever you pass even if you don't call for it it will appear even christian sites you will be browsing christian sites and suddenly a naked picture will come so last will not just walk in and say i'm coming to attack you you will easily rebuke it but it will go through process from probably the spirit of loneliness or the spirit of depression it will go through that stage so by the time you get to last you can't resist last if you rebuke last it won't go you must come down and rebuke loneliness that is what is happening that is why there are people you pray for them and command Rebecca says pastor I'm lasting after every woman you will pray and pray and pray they will go that same night they will go and have sex because his problem is not the last the last 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 need also be number 10 it starts from the demon of loneliness that first opened the door so he has the foundation he has the root if you really want to deliver the person that's why every deliverer must have this discernment of spirits so before somebody comes and say i have this problem in reality he has several spirits several problems and you must be able to trace to the last demon to deal with them can you imagine that jesus asked the man how, who, how many of you? Who are you? He says, we are legend. We are 6,000. It means that before the man could be a successful madman, he needed different demons for 6,000 demons. Everybody is do playing his part. Until it... <laughs> before the man can be a successful madman, that was known by the whole nation. <laughs> he was famous. Everybody in the nation knew him. Before he could be that successful, he needed the processes of 6,000 demons so the final demon the number 6,000 might be his nakedness that is working about it but the real ones are deep <laughs> the real ones are deep and sometimes when we say we have problem marital problem eh, it is not just oh I, I bind that spirit of anger that is upon this family uh, no 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 sir I bind that no 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 it, it goes far you should be able to discern what is bringing division what is bringing that division couples are not peaceful what is bringing that it travels far 
And sometimes it starts from the spirit of depression. And a Christian can be anointed and prayerful, but can never discern the spirit of depression. Because you might think it's your spirituality that is making you keep quiet. But you don't know that a spirit of depression has come. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It means that at any point in time that you don't feel happy, it doesn't matter the prayer you are praying, there is no Holy Ghost around, a demon has entered. A demon has entered. So joy is the trait of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes with three things. Joy, peace, and righteousness. If there is no joy, there cannot be peace. You will be disturbed in the mind. Why am I not happy? Disturbance of, of mind. When there is no peace, the next action might be unrighteous. So when the enemy wants you to commit an unrighteous act, he will not start from bringing you a temptation that will let you commit. No, no, no. He will start from attacking your joy. So you start telling yourself, when I come to church, I'm not happy. When I, raise, I, when I rise up, I'm not happy. When I do this, I'm not happy. Listen, the moment you get that, you should know that your unhappiness is not the target. It's your unrighteousness as the target. But it will begin from your joy. Attack your joy. So the spirit of unhappiness will come. It doesn't matter what we do to you. You are simply not happy. It is never of God for a man to rise up and not to be happy. So when you wake up, especially Monday morning and you feel down rebuke that spirit because it has come to come to open the door for other demons to enter that week he has come to open the door I must be somebody at all if you are a pastor and your eyes are not opened what will break down your church is not a demon that will come and sack the people no he will begin from letting you think the people are disloyal the people don't like you and the moment it starts that way your next action to them will be something else. Then it translates down to what he really wants. So before you bind the demon that is not helping the church grow, you must first bind the demon that is making you feel that you don't have lovers in the church. Am I with the church here at all? Depression, discouragement, the feeling of downness is a demon. The interesting thing, the most painful thing is that it happened to Jesus. Yes. It happened to Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse 37. Can you read for me quickly? One to go. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began, somebody say he began, to be sorrowful and very happy. It means that the Sorrowfulness began from somewhere and it started growing. This is Jesus himself. Depression is taking place. He began to be sorrowful. Then it was growing. Go to the next verse. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here. This is Jesus speaking. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. In other words, I, w- I want to die now. I'm too depressed, I want to die. But you are going to die tomorrow. <laughs> we all know you are going to die. Why? Do you know, Satan wanted to misdirect the assignment of Jesus. So, the moment Jesus finished saying this, he says that, if it be your will, let this cup. I want to die, but I don't want this cup. Let this cross pass. And where is it coming from? Sorrow. He was so sorrowful that he wants to die before his time. He was so sorrowful that he wanted to die and the cross skip him. So, Hebrews says that he prayed. Listen, Hebrews chapter 5. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared he feared so when sorrow came the next thing was fear and when fear came the next thing was I want to escape it so what makes you think that when you entertain unhappiness and sorrow you will not wish that you stop doing what God wants you to do even Jesus when he gave up to sorrow the next thing is that I don't think I want the cross again I don't think I want it I don't want it so the Bible says he prayed to him who was able to deliver him from death. In other words, th- these were the words 
of Jesus. He went to God and said, deliver me from this death. But you came on earth to die and you are not telling me to deliver you. When Satan wanted to reach here, he started with sorrow. And most of us have stood at one place for a long time. And we are not able to go for our destinies. Because what is attacking us, we can't see. What is attacking you is not that which. It is an unknown demon. A demon you don't expect. The demon of confusion. Dangerous. The demon of mental instability. Confusion. Dangerous. The demon of sorrow. Dangerous. Depression. But we don't know. So, I said something. That the greatest breakthrough of Jesus was his ability to pray in this season of sorrow. The Bible says he prayed with strong crying. And other versions record that he prayed until he tears, his sweat was turned into blood. That was his breakthrough. Otherwise, the demon of sorrow would have crushed him. He would have run away from the cross. I don't go die again. I no go die. But look at it. He has been on earth for 33 years preparing himself for that day. Satan, the spirit of sorrow waited until the last night. He has prepared for 33 years to face the cross. But the spirit of sorrow waited and hit him. Boom. And the most painful thing is that when sorrow was hitting him, quickly sleep attacked the disciples. So the people you want them to pray for you, sleep also at the demon of sleep attacked them. So at that point you feel That's why he went to God and said Let this cup pass, I can't handle it again That is what is happening to both many of us today Many of us Many of us What is written fighting us We can't see And it's leading us to the grave Poverty will not come just like that Before poverty comes Quick anger will come Because he knows that wherever you take that quick anger You won't survive You won't survive so quick anger will first come and grow himself in you and sometimes the real demon that wants to hit you can patiently wait for five years for the demon that will open your life for for him to come to work very well for five years in you before he comes in so by the time he comes he's coming to finish the job many of us here i wouldn't say because we are children of god i wouldn't say we are possessed but many of us here have given in to some crafty demons. Yeah. The spirit of divorce will never come as a spirit of divorce. He will wait until the spirit of mistrust and the, the spirit that of deception will come into you and make you feel you begin to not to trust your partner. And he will let that spirit work sometimes. Who is that pastor? Who do you think he is? But before that, he valued the pastor. But when high things hit him, he doesn't care who a pastor is. He doesn't care who the in-law is. He doesn't care who your elder, elder uncle or whatever is. He doesn't care. All he knows is that he wants that divorce at all costs. There is something called the high thing. Somebody say the high thing. High thing. There are, are demons that come to live. When, when, when um, Job chapter 41 talked about Leviathan, described Leviathan as the one who flashes fire. He says that when Leviathan smells or, or blows his nose, it's like fire. When he opens his mouth, it's fire. Dangerous spirit. But the last verse, he says something. He says that this is he that beholded all high things. For he is the king of the children of pride. So this spirit is dangerous, wicked, powerful. But what is written of him is that he watches all the spirits of high things. And he is the king over the high things. Oh Jesus So the Bible says that when Israel crossed the Red Sea God broke the neck Of Leviathan It means the demon that ruled over Pharaoh Was Leviathan The high thing The high thing They, they, they have lifted themselves above everything They don't fear The Bible speaks of Leviathan That he fears nothing He's a creator that fears nothing and when the high thing visits a man, is the end of a man. That is the spirit of pride. You don't fear anything. You, you are not afraid of anyone. You don't care about anyone. The things you used to value, you don't value anymore. If we give you this church, you can come and sleep with the woman in the church. You don't care. You, don't, you, are, you have lifted yourself above the knowledge of God. He says, Libyatan is the king of the high things. 
Romans chapter 12 verse 6 He said that do not subject yourself to the high things There's a demon called the high things And uh, some of you here We are watching your faces Sometimes when you are dealing with Some church members at home Sometimes to be a pastor Is a sad thing To be a pastor is sad Because some of the people People who is not even up to your age Can misbehave and you look at them and because of the spirit of discernment you just know this is this is a demon so you just have to keep quiet the spirit of high things they don't fear your anointing they don't care about your unction they don't care about your age they don't even care that even in physical status they are not close to you they don't care pride he says that Lipiatan is the king of the children of pride and that is us high thing he hits a person the Bible said, before a fall, is pride. This is the last spirit that is killing the church. We pray, we fast, we read the Bible, we quote scriptures. But pride, pride is the reason why. Because of the high things, we are not moving. Who are you that I should bow to you? Who are you that I should, I should listen to you? Who are you? Who is that pastor? Who at all? Who is that? If you are my father and so what? If you are my mother and so what? If you are my senior brother and so what? There are some people who are very nice with their... With their makeup and everything here, but when we when we go home to trace what they are doing to their parents, your compo no Christosumbil. There are some people here, your parents fear you. There are some people here, your husbands fear you. Your senior brothers and sisters, they fear you because when they say something about you, niawope yano, but anya while you are possessed, be delivered. It's the spirit of the high thing. It lifts up himself above the knowledge of God. Rise up on your feet. Thank you for listening to Pastor Ajman Elvis. For inquiries, send us a mail on pastorelvis at gracemountainministry.org. For questions relating to relationships and marriage, send us a mail on loveclinic at elvisajman.org. You can also send your testimonies via testimonies at elvisajman.org. For offerings, visit www.payalphar.org. For more information, make sure you subscribe to this podcast to receive new messages every single day. Remember, faith cometh from hearing and hearing the word of God. Stay blessed.